Hello, um, today I will be breaking down one of my latest animations which features this eyeball going around the eye socket on the sound of a Lexus LFA V10. As always, if you enjoy this video, make sure to hit the like button and... Subscribe to here <laughs> right now. <laughs> subscribe to Yovu. Hey, let's subscribe to Yovu channel. You know the drill, subscribe to my channel, and now let us jump into this project. Right, so a little bit of background information on how I came up with this project. So I was I was out on a bike ride with this guy over here, and he and we heard uh, someone uh, went by and revving their motorcycle engine, and he said to me that oh my god I found that so annoying and that gave me an idea about doing a video on engine sounds uh, and I remember watching on Top Gear the Lexus LFA which has a Lamborghini a V10 uh, which makes a pretty interesting sound and then I went up on the internet and I found a video of a Lexus LFA doing a dyno so I thought I would record that and you know, make an animation regarding uh, that sound. Imagine that, you know, when you shift up or shift down in a car, the on the dash, the number sort of goes up and down uh, uh, accordingly to those gears. So I was thinking to myself, you know, yeah, what if our eyeballs do that? Uh, it's still a normal eyeball, it's still a normal human eyeball, but it is also shifting up and down being moved up and down inside the eye socket. So that's basically the idea. And also the reason why I mentioned that bike ride was just I just want to make something uh, with the sound of an engine to <laughs> my friend off, basically. So that's how I came up with the idea. So all of the elements you see on here on the screen are all shape layers. And I drew them all using the pen tool. And uh, the fill, this one I gave it a sort of a radio fill and the white color is going to be the primary color it's going to be from the background and then it's going to be covered by these two uh, pink and blue colors which also appear on the catalogs and then i put on a couple of later styles uh, including the inner shadows uh, the inner glow and the bevel and emboss uh, all of them giving the uh, sort of shiny uh, metallic look so someone asked me on Instagram to break down all of the settings that I had for the later styles of this animation. So I started with the uh, bevel and emboss and uh, basically this is what my settings look like. Uh, the inner bevel uh, is actually pretty standard. Whenever you open up later styles and you choose uh, bevel and emboss, it's gonna be it's gonna look uh, like this pretty much. And, all I did was changing up the size of the bevel and the and the softness of it. I changed up the uh, color of the highlights to this um, semi-orange uh, tone, and then I use color dash. And the shadow is overlay with um, mid-orange uh, black and set to 74% uh, opacity. That was the bevel and emboss, the inner glow. Uh, for this inner glow, I was, I was thinking of going for a uh, sort of ray-like look, but then I just extended it out to 116 uh, for the size. Uh, and then I used a yellow color and then chose vivid light. So then I just want to keep something that, you know, accentuates the, the whiteness in here a little bit, so that it has more varieties within the colors. And then I just completed off with the inner inner shadow which gives me a little bit more shadow back here to co collaborate with also the bevel and emboss and yeah hard light opacity 30% uh, standard black uh, purple and then, uh, and then I drag up the size and for this project I only use the layer, layer styles themselves uh, to brush up the colors and the inside of the uh, eye socket a little bit you know so the you know the actual all the colors around here and the blending of the color on the inside are actually coming from uh, another separate shape layers which I'm gonna show you guys later on 
So the plan that I started out with was having the uh, this pupil moving up and down according to the gear change, and then all of the dramatic movement of the eyelids are actually uh, added in. You know, I didn't realize there was so much work uh, in mimicking the movement of an eyeball. I actually had to take out uh, many references, including taking a video uh, reference of myself moving the eye around. What I realized was that there are so many, so many small details and so many movements than just moving your eyeballs around that is really hard to, that is really hard to capture in each individual keyframes, you know, because there are these, you know, intricacies in between keyframes. It's not moving from one keyframe uh, to another keyframe, but there you have to like have another one keyframe inside this keyframe to make sure it twitches or something like that. I think this part right here perfectly encapsulates what I was uh, referring to. Uh, our brain subconsciously performs tiny corrections for balancing and obstacle avoidance. Um, this was an answer to why is it so hard for a CGI to mimic and capture real human uh, movement into you know uh, digital and computer generated products but i think i think it also applies to uh, facial movement as well when we say something or when we try to express something it is usually pretty unpredictable you know what which outside elements would have what sort of uh, effects on how we move uh, i think that's why games like Elden noir that has facial capture technology is so successful in trying to capture all those tiny micro movement within the facial expressions of the characters um, i think this is where the work of sun so may comes in uh, he just uploaded this uh, video today on Twitter and I think is, this is some impeccable eye motion over here with all the micro movements and all the lighting and all the textures and everything seems to just fall in line for this almost perfect um, CGI motion. And I think it's getting close to pretty much mimicking real life. So yeah, just a quick shout out to him. This is absolutely amazing and mind blowing and you know, man, you're so talented. <laughs> you can see I try to mimic all those twitching. Uh, the eye itself is still following a linear trajectory. It's still trying to open up, but in between all those movement, there are even more intricate, minute movement of the eye itself. And I think that, I think that's kind of, that's kind of the, of the way to do it if you want to mimic uh, physically accurate movements. So the next thing that I want to break down is the actual movement of the eyeball itself. The eyeball is not controlled by the position property. It's actually an effect that I added in. It's called motion tile and, it, and it's a stock after effects uh, effect. Initially, my workflow for that would be having a bunch of eyeballs stacked on top of each other also lighting up so that we get that uh, eyeballs going around effect uh, when the car speeds up then i thought i would, I would just be creating a, a gigantic composition and then it's going to be really difficult to get it all in one place and in one mental place and then control the eyeball itself so i decided to uh, try out this effect called motion tile so as an example you can see my uh, the composition of my logo over here and when i add the motion tile effect onto it um, what it does is this tile center over here when it controls that it's going to control the imaginary tile that it that the effect created um, based on my logo and the uh, extent to which the tile is going to be uh, controlled by is limited around my the size of my composition unless I change the width and the height of the effect itself. So you know basically when I, uh, for example, if I uh, scale it down, the picture is going to be repeated based on the borders, the four borders of the picture itself, not the composition, sorry. So for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna create a brand new example scene to take you guys through a little bit of my workflow. Uh, right now I'm gonna draw out the eye and I'm gonna just call it 
pilot example and the another shape is going to be the uh, pupil scale it down and then what i did was pre-compose it now that we have the eyeball um, what i'm gonna do because you know remember that motion tiles is gonna repeat the objects based on where the borders of the uh, lighter is so now right now we have the border of the pre-composition on the outside over here and we're gonna want to drag it down to oh, only this area which is where we suppose that the eyeball is gonna be so I know there's like a quicker way to do this but you know I'll just head over here and go to composition setting settings and then drag drag the uh, height down a little bit and also the width some, something like this so that is, is uh, uh, it looks like it's contained in the eye socket now that the eye is in its place uh, what I did was adding the motion towel effect onto the layer uh, as we said before it's gonna create a, a tile and then it's gonna repeat the object based on that imaginary tile uh, it being a, a pre-composition of itself is that you can do anything you want in this composition you can animate it you can add more you can add more object to it and control it animate it in many way and then it's gonna be repeated over here onto this tile which i think is pretty neat so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this eyelid being a mask for this eyeball to be just a pose on how i'm gonna do that is head over here to the eyelid click on that and then duplicate that using control D I'm gonna put it on top of the eyeball and then over here track mat I'm gonna use the second copy of the eyelid that I just done and alpha mat the eyeball onto the eyelid there we go now we have uh, we have something that looks like an eyeball moving around inside of the eyelid next part of my workflow is that I created a new null object and then I parented the tile center to the position of that uh, null so that I get a better control of the entire tile or you know maybe I just prefer using a null object to control um, to control something that I can't get a hold of uh, using a shortcut um, something that people often get mixed up or something that I get mixed up sorry yeah you know, yeah it's not a lot of people make sure the scale of the null and the scale of the object uh, itself are equal you know because if they're not something funky is gonna happen you know right here let's try let's make the eyeball half the size of the null and then we'll do that again we'll, we'll parent the position of the tile center to the position of the null let's see what happens yeah now when you control the null the position of the object itself looks like it's being offset by a few uh, by a few inches you know it's not moving accordingly it's moving at a lower amplitude compared to the uh, changes that are happening to the position of the null and that all has to do with the size of our layer if, if we remember back to what I said before we're actually moving the position of the tile of this imaginary tile and not the uh, layer itself so when you move your null over here the tile is also moving to uh, that specific uh, position but these the scale of the actual of the actual layer is not ref being reflected onto that movement so that's why we see there's a little bit of offset in the position a 50 percent offset to be exact yeah, so that's that was my workflow on getting the eye to move inside of the uh, socket. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate how I'll go about animate this. And I made the eye move by keyframing the position of the null object, and then at the end, when the when I want the eye to go up uh, in the tile, I drag up the Y position of the null object. And then uh, this is gonna be the position that we want it to be and I drag that uh, over here to the timeline uh, Control C copy that and paste it over here 
then I'll drag it up a little bit more so that it has some sort of overshoots and then I'm gonna highlight all of them and press F9 so that they're smoothing out a little bit right like that and then at the part when the car speeds up uh, I'll put a keyframe on here I'm gonna drag this all the way out to the right of the composition until until so many iterations of the of the eyes has passed through right yeah that gives us a pretty good feeling of, of of the ball rolling around the eye socket so quickly and then I add it on top of the eyeball a direction blur to give that uh, illusion of uh, motion blur set your direction to 90 degree and uh, keyframe the blur length this is where it's gonna be at the maximum I'm gonna drag it up to 85 85 is good it looks like it's gonna gradually slow down here this way where it's gonna go back to zero let's play that again yeah usually over here when you can still see most of the uh, you can still see most of the object usually that's where that's where the motion blur hasn't uh, kicked in yet because it's not moving fast enough Uh, and uh, that also counts for when it slows down. Cool. Yeah, so that was the gist of it. And also inside the eyeball itself, I animated each of the circle elements of the eyeball. So whenever it goes up a gear, rolls up like that, it goes up like that, I animated each of the element of the eyeball. Everything on the inside is gonna uh, go up as if they're being pushed up from underneath them. And they sort of uh, create that uh, momentum, that feeling of physical momentum. Yeah, so that's how the movement of the eyeball was controlled using this uh, position null. And I also added this bulge effect to get the fish eye look. The blurring effect over here to depict the passing movement of the eyeball. Um, initially, I was gonna have, uh, I was gonna turn on the uh, the motion blur. Where is it over here? Yeah, I was gonna turn that on, but. Uh, what it gives me was some sort of an echo effect where it's duplicating all the eyeballs and the previous, the past this iteration of the eyeballs and that's not pretty good, that's not a really good look. I remember there's some way to control the uh, amplitude of the motion blur within After Effects and I think maybe I didn't remember that. And also I wanted to have more control over where, over where I want the blurring to happen. So I just, you know, I just thought that I would disable motion blur and then add in this directional blur over here and I keyframe the blur length so that it only happens when the eye starts start to rotate uh, quickly around the sockets. Yeah, I think that's most of the uh, primary movement of the eye out of the way. You know, the rest are, are just um, small details window dressing that make the uh, uh, whole composition more impressive. Mainly I added this uh, uh, light over here just to pose onto this light mask which I draw uh, based on the shape uh, and the movement of the eye. You have to have all the uh, animation on and all the movement on and of the eye sort out. First, this is like way later in the process. So I, I alpha the shapes within the eye, then I alpha inverted the shapes outside the eye. So these two is gonna act as some sort of a shading, some extra, uh, it's gonna add some extra layer of color onto the eye. And then I duplicated that over here onto another one and this is gonna be the mask that I used for this shapes 
to mimic the sort of the movement of the light source when a car goes by you know uh, so you know when you when you're on a car and you goes on a highway for example and there are street lights that go by your car I want to mimic that sort of effect onto this eye over here the faster the car goes the uh, more the more frequently the more the, uh, the more quickly the uh, street lights uh, these lights are gonna go by and it creates a pretty good looking effect I also wanted to add in that the blending mode of the shape was linear light and the movement of the light going about was also provided using motion tile yeah so i think that was all the basics of how i created this eye movement animation in after effects and i know there's still a lot more things that i haven't had a chance to break down in this video uh and you know if there's any question you have or something that pops out to you and something that you find interesting um feel free to leave it down in the comments below and i'll catch you in the next one all right